All right, let's bring in Mitch Fatel. And uh, as I uh, said earlier, I said Mitch Fatel is coming into the studio. That little fruitcake, he'll yeah. be here with Sexy us. Uh, good morning. Cake. How are you? Thanks for having me back on. You're welcome. I always, and it, it is Fatel, right? Because I always, because I always, uh, it's, I always ask you every time you come in because yeah. sometimes uh, I bet a lot of people just say Fatel. That's right? what it started out, and then I had to get famous and tell people it's Fatel. The Fatel, yeah. right? So what have you been up to, my man? How I got you? a show. I got my own show. What what show on is A and E? Oh, it, no kidding. But it's not airing. What do you mean it's not airing? It's in my mind. No, it's uh, it's a show that we got, and we just sh- shot the pilot, and now we're waiting for them to uh, to see if they pick it up. But they, yeah, but it's I think it's too edgy for them. Give me a rundown of what it is. Well, it's about this is my new CD. It's uh, called Public Display of Perversion, and that's Jessica, my wife. Public now. display of of perversion. perversion. Okay. Her ass right. looks good on that. Yeah, and if you remember, last time I came in here, I was about to get married to her. Right. And we got married, and then A and E picked up a reality show about me being on the road and her going out with girls. Oh. And uh, and so now that sounds too edgy for A and E. Well, that does. yeah. So they bought it saying that they wanted to get more edgy, and now they're trying to tone it down. <laughs> yeah, that's, Seriously. I've actually worked, when I used to work for CBS, that's what they, one time they brought me to this yeah. radio station in Chicago, and they go, we, look, you, this is the new direction of uh, the talk format. We want, you know, we want you, this this talk station, oh, it was the worst radio station in the world. Everyone was like 60 years old. They go, you are exactly what we want, the future. Right. We get there, and yeah. they go, yeah, we don't like anything that you're doing. Can you be more like the 60-year-old a-holes we have on the radio already? And oh, it was, it was well, awful. the people who make Duck Dynasty saw our uh, saw like my stand-up or whatever, and talk and yeah. how I talk about how me and Jessica are like Jessica is. Well, I'm not really a swinger. But she's kind of a swinger. Yeah. Like, she cheats on me. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, that's what I call it. No, like, we do this thing, like, where she's allowed to have sex with other girls when I'm on the road because she's bisexual. Right. So, A&E said that they wanted to get a little edgier, their network, and so they bought this reality show, and then all of a sudden, right before we taped, they're like... Uh, we're not going to mention that Jess is bisexual, and we're not going to mention that you guys do this. And I was like, well, what are you going to mention? Like, That's the whole point of the show, right? So now we're trying to convince them. What kind of dough do they pay when they when you say that they buy this reality show? Because they haven't picked it up. They haven't aired it. They've, they feel that you've done a pilot. Yeah, it seems like it. everybody else is making money but me on the show. Yeah, do you make, I mean, do you get anything <laughs> well, out of this? Well, if the show or? gets... If the show gets picked up, yeah, then I'll sure. be really rich and <laughs> yeah. I can do like Rover Fest and stuff and be like really <laughs> up there. But if it's not picked up, you know, then you just get like a pilot fee or whatever. So. Yeah. What is what is that? Like a few thousand? A couple of thousand. Yeah. It's not much, right? It, you, you would do it for free. I mean, I don't, you know, yeah. it, it's more about getting the pilot on. But, you know, the, the amazing thing about it, what you learn in this business is until you, until you, really hit everybody else makes money around you yeah until, you know and so and then and that's kind of cool that makes sense are you at and the point where you're making pretty good dough in I this do about career like, like the number that you're you never thought you would do as a kid yeah but then you're there and you're like eh, it kind of sucks well i remember when i was in radio like when i first got into radio <clears throat> you know you have to move around you're making diddly squat money and right. then I kept saying, I go, man, if I could just get a job where I make $35,000 a year, I'll be set. So then I make $35,000 a year. And then one of my coworkers, he made $50,000 a year. And I'm like, if I could only make $50,000 a year, that would be great. And And have girls. Yes. Throwing themselves. Then the afternoon yeah. show at the station, there were two guys, and the, this is years ago, the two guys, that they were doing the afternoon show. They were making a hundred grand a piece, and I was like, oh my God, if I could only make a hundred thousand dollars a year, th- you'd be sa- I don't think anyone is ever really satisfied with- Well, what I, what I know is that whatever you make, you can spend. You spend it, right. And then you never quite feel like you're, like people say to me, like I have family members and stuff that are like, I can't believe I'm like the rich one. And they're like, <laughs> they're like, can we borrow money? And I'm like, I have no money. And right. then they think that you're being mean, but you're like, no, it, it, it somehow, and also being married. I was, it, it felt when I was single that I was rich, but right. now that I'm married, it feels like I'm getting drained. Uh, it sure it does. Yeah. You well does she does she work? Does she She's bring going in to any school dough? And I'm paying for her oh, school. Oh man, boy, and you're a sucker. I had to pay. She's to gonna get her leave to you in a couple five years. She'll yeah. leave you. I had to buy her a strip club that I met her in. So what? what uh, <laughs> Why did you have to get her out of jail? What'd she do? No, I'm joking. Oh, oh, oh. 
Has she ever been arrested? No, Jessica hasn't been arrested. Jessica's a good girl who was a bad girl. Have you ever been arrested? When I was 16. What would you get arrested for? Prostitution. Stop it. No, uh, <laughs> I was, actually I was uh, for drinking and then I got arrested, but not even, I don't think it's arrested, it was just brought in, a cop saw me and my girlfriend having sex. Oh. Yeah. Where? Like out in public in a parking lot or something? Yeah, or? like we were at a lake yeah. and we had pulled up and- why would they, did they actually take you to the police station for that? Yeah, but back then, I mean, I'm 46. Right. So I think back then it was less accepted. Mm -hmm. Now they're twerking and do it in public. Right. So I don't think it's as big a deal. I would think they would just like kind of give you a ticket and be like, <laughs> yeah. don't do that again or yeah. something. But they actually took well, you down to public, the police yeah, station. Well, because we I guess all the kids were going down well, there. Well, nowadays, you know, they probably, you think it's it's more accepted nowadays about what they would have, they probably would have uh, popped you and you would be like a registered sex offender yeah, or something yeah. crazy. Like yeah, that, you know. Yeah, I don't yeah. know how I feel about these these sex offender things. I get the I get the guys that are, uh, you know, like and the diddling girls. diddling a, a, a ten year old girl. I, I, that that I understand, but some of this stuff that the guys end up on these sex offender lists forever. I I, I don't I don't know how I feel about like that. Urinating in public. I have list. heard stories about that because your dong's right. out, right? Um, or. You know, I've heard stories of guys who are like 19 and their girlfriend is 17 and they get hit with some sort of statutory well, rape right. and then they're they're yeah. on that forever. Also, you can get in a lot of trouble for having sex on a plane. Uh huh. You can get you could get you could get really in trouble for that now. Like that's used to be like a fun little fantasy right, thing. Right. You can get in a lot of trouble for that, and yeah. you can get in a lot of trouble. You ever done that? Yeah, me and Jessica had sex on the way home from Australia, but we didn't even do... We thought doing it in the bathroom would be boring, so we did it in our seats while everybody else was sleeping around <laughs> How do you us. do that? She just straddles she you? She got or? out like she was going to the bathroom. Yeah. And uh, I was the bathroom. <laughs> you know? She just like... She, she got out like she was getting... And then what we did is she... And everybody was exhausted and sleeping. It's an Australian flight. Everybody's exhausted. Right. And it's tired probably like and, a fourteen hour flight yeah, or something. Yeah, and it's just a kangaroo that goes by every now yeah. and then. And so uh and so she just kinda got out like she was going to the bathroom and then we said, right. Well, if anyone walks out, she'll just kinda she had a skirt on, she'll just get up like she was just, you know, scooting out of the seat. Right. Yeah. Oh, you dirty couple you. Yeah. You still do this? I heard that you got a show on uh, Howard 101 yeah. on Sirius. Yeah, it's called Sex and Swing. Actually, and since last time I was here, me and Jessica, uh, we had a really cool girl call in one of our shows, and she came out with us and brought her boyfriend, mm -hmm. and then we all kind of had this like uh, swinging thing. You had like an orgy thing going yeah, on. Yeah, we had an orgy, much. and I wow. was scared I wouldn't be able to do it in front of the other guy. Have you ever had sex in front of another guy? Yes. And were you good at it? Yes, because you want to show off. You want to be like, I can rail this bitch uh, better than you could. You so, know? so you did good. I was. Nervous. I don't know. I I hope I. I, I guess I don't know. Then, you were nervous about it. Yeah, you weren't nervous at all. I think you have to have a you know copious amounts of alcohol, and at that point you You're can do wasted. yeah you can do anything. <laughs> yeah, see, I can't do anything on alcohol. That's the problem. Oh, well, it doesn't stand at attention. It just no. I just don't. I'm just not. Oh, you I, don't drink, right? Yeah, I'm not a drinker. I, I, I'll do like a like a ecstasy every now and then. I like yeah. that stuff. Yeah. That makes me happy. Boy, I've I've only done ecstasy like twice in my life. Oh, you should do it tonight. <laughs> what does yeah, it do to do you? Tell me the effect that it has well, on the you. The first thing it does is apparently I'm a star on ecstasy because apparently a lot of guys can't get erect on ecstasy, yeah. and I have no problem with that. Yeah. And then you can't have an orgasm. Yeah. So you're like the star of the party yeah. at the orgy because <laughs> if you can get it up and then you you can't you just can't have an orgasm. Is you that know? good though? It sucks for you. Well, yeah, but it's but then you're a legend, and then you yeah. work off of that for the next couple of months. <laughs> yeah, then you're a legend, but then every time that you like bang a chick after that or whatever, they're like, I thought he was a legend. Thirty seconds, right? But who How cares did you get this reputation? That. Yeah, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, I've only done ecstasy twice, I think both times were with uh, I was I was dating this and porn you didn't star love it? actually. The f one time it didn't really have much of an effect on me. I don't think the other time. The other time, I just remember uh, we went out to a bar, 
and I got very talkative with people. I'm not a very talkative guy outside of the show. Yeah, I'm the same way off stage. And I started just talking to people in the bar and in the club that we were at and like talking to dudes in the bathroom and stuff. Yeah, oh, you know, like, like, what's this guy into? Yeah, they're like, wow, this guy's really friendly and outgoing, yeah. which is the opposite of my personality. <laughs> then, then we went back to my apartment and I, I just remember laying, I, I, I can't remember if we had sex or not. I, I guess, I don't know, but- I remember laying in the living room floor on our uh, both of us just laying next to each other on our backs, just, just staring at the ceiling for like, oh, the sun comes up. It's like eight in the morning. You're just still like uh, wide awake. I mean, it was. Yeah. Well, the, th- the funny thing is, is I'm the same way. Like, I don't like to hang out with other people. I just like to ha- I just like to go out with Jess. And so we had another couple. And that's when I became a fan of ecstasy because the same reason we were doing ecstasy. And I just kept talking to the guy. Yeah. And then all of a sudden he goes, man, I really love you. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, but here's what's even scary. I go, I love you too. <laughs> like, it was like this really, like you just feel a lot of love for everybody, yeah. but it wasn't a sexual love until we made love, yeah. but it wasn't, it wasn't sexual. It was just like this kind of like, wow, you're, you're my buddy. And I, and then we all had a little orgy. And then the next day I told Jess, like, I, I, I mean, I think me and that guy are friends, and then we all got together and we weren't on ecstasy. And I was like, I kind of hate this guy. <laughs> I was like, why would I want to talk to this yeah. guy? Is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, when you have this orgy, and I, I like I said, uh, Mitch Fatel, a little, a little fruit cake is coming in. That's just because you're so tiny. Yeah, you're so, I'm, I'm you're like a little. Yeah, you're a little. You know. A little, uh, but but were you actually doing anything with the guy in this world? No, I'm or? not. I don't have any interest in the guy. But I think Jessica thought that the guy maybe liked me mm-hmm. because. Uh, we were, I had never, this was the first time I had done this, and he was having sex with his girlfriend in the bed, and I was having sex with Jess, which was my girlfriend at the time, and then uh, and then we were done. You high five and switch, or? No, no, we didn't switch, we weren't doing that yet. Okay. This is like a year, two years ago, and um, and then uh, Jessica kind of gives me this look, like, like, get, move, like the guy's kind of member was kind of starting to Getting, inch forward <laughs> yeah. and i was kind of sucking on it so. oh, oh wait a second no, yeah, you can't say, can't say that no. <laughs> no, we're not I'm on satellite kidding. anymore <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no so so and jess was like yeah i think he liked you yeah and uh and so uh no but i didn't i didn't do anything because with- i would tell uh, i mean don't take this the wrong way i would uh, i could see you doing that dude. like uh, you right, you come you across every guy as a doing that? No, you come across as, uh, like I said, don't take this the wrong way. You could be gay, 100% gay. Like, I, think any I, I don't think could... anyone would uh, would be surprised if it came out like a year from now. Mitch tells gay, you know? like. Well, I know Dieter wouldn't be surprised, but that's just between <laughs> us, and that's something I'm not supposed to talk about. But uh, but I know because I think, because I'm small. Like, that's why, like, I look like I could be, like, someone's girlfriend. And you have cause... a high-pitched voice, and you're, you Is know... my voice high-pitched? It is, yeah. Oh, I, didn't th- I thought I had a man. I have very small t- testicles but i actually have a very uh sizable member for, yeah. so i have a an average size penis but on me it looks gigantic because right. i'm only five five right. so it's like an optical illusion <laughs> when i take off my pants girls look at me like when you fake throw the ball at the dog they're like, <laughs> like they don't it doesn't kind of add they, up <laughs> yeah and because they're like and then uh what? yeah they're confused so well, how tall are you 5'11". Do you have a, you've have you ever had a gay experience ever in your life? No. Not one? No, I mean I the the closest you could say that I've had to a gay experience would be having a I've had a couple of them, threesomes like uh, tag teaming a girl, oh, but me nothing either. happened with yeah. you know between me and the guy. I'm not right. interested. Well, in that's that. the me too. Though, yeah. Rover. What's that? You did a DP. I did do that. Oh, yes, so I did. Yes. Did you do a DP? Yes. Probably I touched. have not done a DP. Yeah. See, I thought you were all like sexually liberal. I th- I would have thought never... everything you could come up with, Mitch Fatel. No, I'm brand done. new yeah. to this. You you seem like more the expert. Like you seem like my <laughs> mentor, and you should bring me into the world. <laughs> well, who was the porn okay, star? Okay, Daniel, dated? son. Because uh, my goal has always been a data porn star. Jess is the closest I got because she was a stripper. So and that was well. This my this fantasy. was back. Uh, her name was Raylene. This is back in like 2000. So this is quite some time ago. Uh, she was a vivid girl, and she was we dated for maybe. Uh, a little, I think, a little under a year. Yeah, and uh, porn. The the problem with the porn world is that it's just like high school. That uh, you you remember when you were in high school, you would talk to someone and they'd go, "Oh my God, do you know what so and so said about so and so and what this person did?" And blah blah blah. It's very. 
it's an immature industry. Go yeah. figure. Yeah. Um, and it just it kind of got old after a while, really. Yeah, um, that was always my fantasy, though, is to go out with one of those girls. You uh, so this show you still have this on on Sirius. This is you, you, this radio show. Or no, was we're not this like doing the sh- We're not doing the show anymore because our show is more for couples, and Howard's Network is just a bunch of dudes calling and going, <laughs> "I want to see your wife's vagina." And so it just got old after a while, yeah. and we were like, "Does anyone want to talk about relationships?" No, I want to see your wife's vagina. So we'd show her that, and then. That and then that was boring. end of the show. Yeah, yeah. show. There you go. Uh, yeah, and I'd get my twenty bucks, and that was the end of it. Yeah, that's what they pay over there, right? Yeah. Unless your name is Howard Stern. Right. I heard he made ninety million dollars. It just came out ninety million dollars a year is what he makes. Him and Simon Cowell were tied for like the third, third highest, wow. third highest paid entertainers Howard's or something good for last 90 year. Ninety now. Ninety million dollars. Can you believe that? Jeez, and he's married. <laughs> That seems boring to me. If you're going to make that kind of money and you're married, that's the only reason I married Jess is I'm allowed to have sex with other girls. But I know he's not allowed to have sex with other girls. So what's the point of having $90 million if you have to have sex with the same girl every day for the rest of your life? He must really enjoy what he does, too, because he's been doing it for so long that you'd think that at this point, if you've made all these millions and millions of dollars, why keep doing it? Wouldn't you just retire and and live with your wife and just travel around? You wouldn't retire, would you? No, it's fun. I don't know. I do enjoy it, but I think if you gave me ninety million dollars, and he—that's what he makes in a year, one year. But if you were to just hand me ninety million dollars, and then after taxes and your agent and all of that, now you're down to only about forty million by the time you pay your agent and everything. Forty million Still net. Forty mil. Uh, well, with Howard too, I, I'm guessing he was divorced, so I'll bet he pays an ass load in alimony or whatever you know there's got to well, be no his, a lot his of kids going. are all grown up now and his wife's remarried and they probably oh, remarried settle. so yeah. they probably he probably yeah, doesn't want fine he's, um, he doesn't have to give her he probably gave her i'm assuming maybe 20 mil when they broke up or something oh, that's it yeah, oh that's it. For yeah i'm making 90 yeah. mil um but if you were to give me $40 million right now in a tax-free, I might walk away. I, th- I, I, don't I might think you walk would. away from this. I don't think you would. I think you don't think so? I think for six months it'd be fun, and then you'd miss it. Because yeah. Because you'd miss the uh, – because I think being a rich dude, the difference is, is, is that girls – the difference between being famous and being rich is I think when you're famous, girls want to have sex with you because they like you. When you're yeah. rich, they're doing it just because they have to. <laughs> you know, like that's kind of – and I'm always the kind of person, like I've never – been a prostitute guy because to yeah. me not earning it with my personality is boring right like it just never made sense to me like i never was a strip club guy the only thing i ever cared about was getting normal girls to do stuff that i knew that their husbands would one day wish they had never done <laughs> that's kind of always my goal is to do things that girls would feel bad about later yeah. would they, you re- would you retire from comedy if you made a uh, hundred million dollars no, next year you no. would you would keep going and you no, because i need the i need the love and i still yeah like that's the thing is i still get off on seeing on seeing other girls want me in front of my wife like mm-hmm. it makes me feel really like uh like that's what I say is like you're rich nobody care it's just mm-hmm. it's just it's a fake it's a fake like old rich dudes like the like I I'm I'll, I'll do shows in Vegas where you see these old rich dudes with these hot young girls and you could just tell the girls just don't want to be there but yeah. they're just going through the motions but if you're famous they're still really excited to be with you, and I think they'll get more attracted to you because yeah. of that. Don't you, don't you find no, that? No, I think you're probably right. And I guess doing the radio show gives me uh, some sort of sense. Even if I had a, you know, $50 million, I could walk. Uh, but it gives you a sense of uh, you know, importance, I suppose, that you know, you're talking to people, you're doing something, you're entertaining people. Oh, yeah. I really am not qualified to do anything else in my Me life. Me either. And not, not only that, but I was watching your video from Roverfest, and there's all these hot, hot slutty girls sure. that'll easily have sex with you and me if you invite me <laughs> sooner or later and and those girls wouldn't have had sex with us if we were oh, working not in a million years yeah. so so i don't think just being rich like i know like there was this there was this cruise we went on with this really rich dude and uh and me and Jess were invited on and he'd have sex with the girls on the cruise they were all these gorgeous kind of strippers mm-hmm. but all the strippers just did it to get it out of the way mm mm-hmm. But whereas if you're famous, that's kind of a notch in their belt to say, you know what I'm saying? People will sometimes say to me, like if I uh, date a hot girl or something, people will say, well, there, you know, she would never date you if you weren't on the radio. I'm going, yeah, no kidding. Duh, yeah, of yeah. course. But 
I think it's up to you to keep them. You know, no one's going to date you for a year or two years just because you're on the radio. You know what I mean? Sure. They might they might have sex with you a couple times, right, Dieter? Right, but, but to stay to stay around, that's up to you. So it, right. it, it's it's like it's it's like uh, bait. You know, brings them in, reels them, them in. in. But yeah. you you have to you have then have to hook them and reel them. You know? Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to hook them. <laughs> you're throwing them back. Yeah, right, right. See, that's the problem that I was when I was single. Is I'd get I always dreamed about getting groupies. And then, like, if I was at Rover Fest and I was single, mm-hmm. every slutty girl that was at Rover Fest, I would try to make into a relationship because I would try to save them. Like, that was my big thing. That like, you had the, the wounded bird. Once syndrome. I had sex with them, then I'd be like, you don't, you shouldn't have to walk around like that. And like, <laughs> and then I want to fix them. And then the fact that they're so messed up, I'd start to hate them. Yeah, it was a cycle. Uh, and let me plug uh, Mitch Fatel's. Uh, he's going to be at the Improv, seven thirty and ten fifteen yes, tonight. It's a great show. Tomorrow, seven thirty and ten fifteen, and Sunday at uh, seven o'clock. And he has a, a new CD, public display of perversion, which is available in stores or at MitchFatel.com. F A T E L is how you spell his last name. Yes. What happened? Just. I don't know, maybe a week or two ago. You go and you do comedy at a military that? base or something? Or where right, did so you I do this? So I get a call that they go, the troops are big fans of yours. They bring your CDs out to Afghanistan and Iraq and all this stuff. And they keep writing me. All the troops are going, when are you going to come and do a show for us? So finally, Air Force, uh, uh, Armed Forces Entertainment calls me and they go, we get all these requests for you to come out and do shows. And they said, would you do a week tour for us? And I said, yeah. I said, by the way, you know, my act is probably not like, uh, it's probably not for a, for a, for a military base environment. Mm-hmm. I'm a little bit sexual. I can tone it down a little bit, but I'm not going to change what I do. And they said, no, it's fine because we're going to say it's an adult show and it's going to be at bars, like on these bases where, you know, people are going to know they don't bring their families or anything. And they said, okay. And I said, okay, good. As long as it's labeled as an adult show and I can do what I want. So a whole week I go out and I have the best week of my life. We go to Germany and England. We're doing all these uh, Air Force bases and mm-hmm. stuff. And the shows are going great. And everybody is loving me and I'm feeling really good and all the commanders are giving me these commemorative coins so then I do a joke uh, in my act where I said that me and Jessica my wife had sex on the first date and I said I go uh, but it was something we couldn't help it was just in the air I said we were out to dinner and halfway through dinner I started realizing like we are definitely going to have sex because she had gone to the bathroom and left her drink with me (laughs) that's the big joke and a colonel decides that's going to make people rape everybody on the on the base in lake and heath england he go he gets he he can't believe i've said this joke now because apparently there's sexual assaults in the air force and this oh, is that's a, a big thing now and apparently all these mitch sexual Fate, assaults in the military yeah and mitch Fay tells joke about spiking his wife's <laughs> drink which is obviously so true he decides this is going to cause rape and he writes this big commentary well, on let me help. read uh let me read this guy this colonel or whatever yeah. this is um Colonel Sierra is his name. Colonel uh, Mark Sierra, who's the vice commander of the 48th Fighter Colonel Wing. Colonel Faggy Fagman. <laughs> <laughs> he writes that, uh, he, he says that after Mitch Fatel's performance, he said, no airman, no human <laughs> deserves the depravity uh, shrouded in comedy associated with our military. He said that Fatel went over the line when he insulted women's anatomies. Added a punchline about spiking drinks to facilitate sex, describing repeatedly removing undergarments while whispering she was asleep. She was asleep. Then in his coup de grace, demonstrated how to physically push a lady into oral sex and remove the evidence. That's true, but I never coup de grace it. I don't even know what that means. The headliner hit the line obliquely, kept assaulting, and crossed headstrong. I left the show. This is the colonel's words. I left the show. I could have taken charge, upheld the line of our new military culture of professionalism and respect, and interrupted the comedian. As airmen and leaders, we are taught to intervene. On all accounts, I failed to stand up and take the sword from the attacker, the microphone from the comedian. Instead, I departed and reported. 
for those I left behind and the Liberty Club still under assault by uh, still under assault by the headliner. I am sorry. So this guy really hated you. I'm going to put that on my poster. <laughs> That's my show right there. That's fantastic. What would you have done if the guy, if the colonel tried to intervene okay, in your show? This is why Colonel Faggy is, first of all, making himself sound better than he is because the reason why he didn't end the show was because it was sold out. There was 350 soldiers going crazy, women and men laughing at my show. It was by far my best show of the week. He would have been booed off the stage. So he <laughs> just left and then acted as if like I should have been and I want to apologize. It's like there was and everybody and I'm getting thousands of letters from military guys going we hate this guy. This guy is just the worst. It's like it's this whole opportunism thing of like he's trying to show that like he, he had to walk out. First of all, his wife was with him. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they have no sense of humor. And uh, and first of all, you know it it was funny. Like I I I could understand if a comedian went on stage and started just going like, "You gotta go rape those girls." But it was like <laughs> a joke about my wife that was right. you know it's all obviously comedy. And as you know, you know I I'm five five. I'm obviously not advocating that there's violence against women unless they really deserve it. You couldn't so, actually rape a woman if you tried. I'm no, guessing. No, I get I get my ass kicked. So. <laughs> Even one who's roofied, she'd still take his right. little ass. Yeah. So I'm not gonna get in a fight with anybody. So. Uh, so anyway, so now actually it's the best thing that's ever happened to me because it's like people are like, you know, all these military magazines are interviewing me now mm-hmm. and I'm just saying, you know, and I, so I wrote a, dis, I wrote a response to him mm-hmm. on uh, chortle.com and uh, that's my response is kind of going uh, viral. So. What was your response in a nutshell? Just basically that he's gay. <laughs> um, that you know that anybody that doesn't like my act it's just like my response is he's gay uh my response was just basically that you know these are shows for the soldiers not for him that this is they're the ones that have my cds and my uh dvds out in out in afghanistan and iraq and it's the one that's helping the morale and one after the other came over to me telling me how much i was helping morale by coming out there and performing for them and uh and it was listed as an adult show and these are adult people who are sent to shoot people and if they were offended by my act they could get up and walk out they don't need colonel Sierra to save them from me mm-hmm. that, that's a very holier than now that that's not what our country is based on our country is based on us making our own decisions Thank do you, you um is there anything that you've ever removed or that you've done and then you regretted in any of your acts if in you australia ever crossed the line? in australia i uh did a joke about my girlfriend having a period and there was a woman, an old lesbian in the audience who decided that that was disgusting and didn't want me to do it again. And they said, can you not do that joke? And I said, why wouldn't I not do that joke? And they said, because it's because the because the government official said it's gross. And I said, but it's not sexist, it's not it's not racist, it's not offensive in any way, it's just gross. I said, and the audience loves the joke. And they said, well, uh, this person is important to the festival, that they're uh, in the government, and they would rather you didn't do it. And I took it out, and I wish I hadn't. Because I don't think you should ever not do something because it's not, if it's... A, well, I don't even know if you shouldn't do something because if it's offensive, because I think everybody's offended by something. So, mm-hmm. who, when, where do you draw the line? But I always felt like the worst thing to do is because someone doesn't like a joke that they have a right to tell other people not mm-hmm. to hear it when it's not in any way even offensive. It was just gross. How when you go over and you do like Australia or something? Yeah. Uh, you, you, big crowd i mean do you have fans well, it was a comedy uh, festival no i yeah. didn't have a i have a decent amount of fans they gave me my own show and i was able to sell about you know 100 tickets a night but nothing mm. more than that so there's um uh, dave Chappelle is doing like what never is heard this, of him what's this comedy festival that they're doing charlie Are you, charlie's going to it this weekend right yeah it's um it's a 15 city tour with flight of the concords that's all i know and it, so it, but oh, I it's, heard about that. It's like a f- comedy festival, is yeah, what they're saying. Yeah, it starts at five o'clock in the middle of the day. Like, uh, it, like a huge I wonder what that's like. Like, too. I can understand a festival being. It might be like long. music or yeah. whatever. But it's you just know? comedians the whole time. This might be long. Right? Yeah, yeah I don't know how that. I mean, you when said take, that this was a comedy festival. So what's that like exactly? I mean, was this? I mean, this is like an outdoor amphitheater sort of thing, an all day festival. And I just wonder how that's yeah, going to work that's with not gonna... with comedians because. 
comedy I think you have to pay a little bit more attention to than like a band can be going in the background, a hot chick walks by, you hit on her, you start talking to her or whatever. Right. Comedy, you just, you can't. If you you're gotta not be quiet paying, and pay attention. If you're not paying attention. Yeah. yeah. Right. I also think comedy is a much more intimate form of entertainment. And then once you. I always historically will do better with 150 to 200 people. I think that's how comedy is meant to be. Then, you know, like I've done 3,000 seat stadiums in Canada and it feels very out of control for me mm-hmm. and you can't stop and just talk to somebody. You have mm-hmm. to keep it moving very, mm-hmm. very fast. And I think the art of comedy is kind of like, it's just, it's more of a, it's, 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 it's like you can't do this show when you do Rover Fest. You can't sit up there for right. four hours and just talk. You have to put on a show. Right. And I think the comedy in a venue like that is a little odd. It's, it's tough. All right. I'm making notes. Never book Mitch Fatel for Rover Fest. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying I could put it on and I could tell all my military yeah. jokes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> no, it's it's a lot of times people would you know they they we, we don't do it, but but years ago they uh, they'd always say can you bring your show broadcast live right. from someplace like some bar or some this or some that and, oh it'll be great but it just sucks man it's, especially when you like have a crowd like looking at you or something and it's just, we've done it at bars before it, it yeah years and years ago like yeah. ten years ago and fi- I did it a couple of times ago it's forget a nightmare. this I go why would I ever why would I ever do this again? You're trying to entertain the 200 people that are sitting here and not the 200,000 people that are, are, are listening on the radio. It's just not good radio, right. I don't, I don't yeah. think. When so. have you ever, when you before you even were in radio, when were you ever listening to anyone at something like that and enjoying it? It's, mm, you're right. Probably it's, never. You just never do it. No. I mean, the one thing I think that you could make uh, the case for is, is if it was a special event, like Dieter fought uh, Butterbean, that big fat boxer. Oh, or whatever. did you? We closed down a street downtown. This was years ago. And just, it was free. And just, I don't know how many people, like what, 10,000 people show up to this thing? We, we didn't know how many people were going to show up. And it was like an absolute chaos, a mob scene of just people climbing light poles and hanging out of windows and stuff. Uh, we actually, re- we didn't broadcast live. We recorded, we did it in real time. We record, because it was in the afternoon. Uh, we recorded that show. Yeah. Now that I think something like that is you could do if you had something big that you're doing, something that people are interested in. But just going out and doing the, do, you know, doing the show from someplace. What is, happened? What was the outcome? Oh, not good. <laughs> you got hurt. It went. It went the entire time. It went three rounds. But he that's knocked, impressive. He knocked me down. What? Six, seven times. I just, I blacked out at, I mean, halfway through, I don't remember. This was getting, totally real. You totally, Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think he thought, like, at first it was just going to be, oh, I'm going to fight this radio guy and knock him out. First round was kind of fun. But then by the second round, he's like, I can't knock this radio guy out. Then by the third round, he's freaking pissed. He's bringing haymakers from hell just trying Whoa. to knock my head off. <laughs> he, he was upset that I went the distance. Yeah, he was. Uh, this Good was for you, though. How many years ago was that, Dieter? Six. This is uh, here. I'll see if I can. Uh, <clears throat> let me see here. Oh, if he I can... hit like he cracked my ribs and c- concussion, broken nose. But was... you made it for three rounds, dude. I don't know how. It's me brutal, see. man. Wow, you couldn't even go two rounds with me. <laughs> no, I don't want. I don't. I want nothing <laughs> I to do mean, with you, man. Yeah. I'm trying well, to I, see if uh, I can show. And Mitch I take some ecstasy before we do ours. Here's a here's a little bit of uh, video of Dieter versus Good Butterbean. For you, Dieter. But uh, I wish I could show him like right where you get. I mean, he got he got his bell rung, just straight knocked out oh, yeah, a, a couple see, of times, and he. I mean, just. But you could see you could see butter butter beans frustrated. You could see it. Was this for charity? No, it was just uh, something that we. It was just. I don't know how this. How did this even get started? You were I just, just said. I go. He's not an athlete. He's, just, he's so fat. I go. You can't count Butterbean as an athlete. Because people were saying he was he was on a list like the top ten athletes in the world or something. And I'm like, and yeah, he heard time. he heard that Dieter was talking smack about him, and he's like, you know what? I'll, he heard about it, and he's like, <laughs> if you think you're such a badass, let's let's go fight. So what a great business we're in that this could even happen. Well, I know. He comes but look studio. at this. This is like not even set. I mean, this is just closed the street yeah. off downtown. Like, look at wow. all the mass number of people out there that are just, you know. Watch this. Oh, this is great. Here it's Dieter's. Oh, oh. 
and then he ducks. That's his greatest no, move right dealing. there. And just yeah, that boom. He, that he <laughs> and I was out. I was out there, man. And in the background, uh, uh, Jeffrey's uh, twerking too, <laughs> in the audience. Uh, so that's uh, <laughs> that's a great video. Wow, you. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yes, Jeffrey. Oh, what is I it? I wasn't there when Dieter fought Butterbean. So, so your face, oh, I was not oh. in the background. Face on you, Mitch. Mitch. He didn't work I on the show yet. I was not there yet. when uh, when Dieter fought Butterbean. I have seen the video, and oh. I thought. Dieter yeah, held the... his own against Butterbean, though, but unfortunately, must have you know, been a hot girl rib and lost the fight, though. But he, <laughs> did, you know, he did hold his own, though. Thanks. Jeff. You know what's what's funny is that we had a, a question on the Thursday hookup just just this week, I think, and it, or maybe last week, and the, the question was, what's the craziest thing you've ever done, or the most exciting thing that you've ever done in your life? And yeah. the guy had some story, and I forget what the story was. But that really stuck in my head because his his greatest thing that he'd ever done in his life wasn't that great. And it, it sort of hit home that out of all the years that we've been doing this, all of the crazy things that we've done and have been able to do and people that we've met and places that we've gone, it's it's – Pretty amazing. I mean, I, you probably think the same. So, I mean, you, who business. else gets to go to, to Australia and all to these military bases and South Africa? I'm sure you've done crazy things yeah. just from you know whatever. And it's like, I, I really go, wow. I, I I always sort of beat myself up, going, I sleep too much. I should be doing more with my life. I should be, you know. But then I thought about it after I heard that guy's story. And I go, yeah. Me? You know, you know. You want to know what I what I was what hit me recently is it hit me that growing up. I wanted to do the things that I had basically seen in porno movies. Like mm-hmm. I wanted to be that guy that didn't that just didn't have to go on a regular date and stuff. And it hit me, I guess that's why I finally got married that I had done a lot of that. Yeah. That I had done stuff that you'd be shocked if you heard <laughs> like you know what I'm saying like right. like that was to me I realized that most people will only fantasize about those things the rest of their lives. Like mm-hmm. that was what hit me is that I've done things where like all of a sudden I've had sex with a girl that I met literally a minute ago and then got herpes and stuff. So <laughs> that was always the fantasy. <laughs> yeah, but uh but you know I think one time I was having uh and I think like you just said you've done these threesomes and stuff. You don't realize that like the majority of the population never gets to do that ever. Right. right. And and I was one time having uh sex with two strippers uh which is how i know i'm not gay even though you tell me i keep remembering that and uh i was having sex with two strippers and a uh, guy walked by um to to bring the to bring food you know in the hotel yeah and i just thought well if i i if i was the guy because i used to be a waiter yeah bringing the food to that room i think that was the luckiest human being <laughs> yeah. in the history of the world yeah, of course you would right and and then i and thought, you were that well, guy i'm that guy now and you know and now my fantasy is to be butterbean and take down <laughs> Dieter. <laughs> uh, Mitch Fatel is going to uh, be at the Improv tonight at seven thirty and ten fifteen. Uh, tomorrow night seven thirty and ten fifteen. Sunday at se- uh, seven o'clock. Before I'm I'm running behind, but before I let you go, let me go to Jacob quickly. Uh, Jacob, you're on Rover's Morning Glory with Mitch Fatel. Good morning, Jacob. Hey guys, how Rover? How you doing? Yo, what's happening, man? Hey, nothing. Just wanted to uh, give props to Mitch last night. Was at the show. It was very good. Recommend it to everybody. Good man. Uh, very funny guy. Thank you, Jacob, for but, saying um, that. And you're welcome. Um, I was actually sitting right behind uh, Pinocchio. Um, oh, uh, PF. Yeah. Very funny. <laughs> yeah. Well. And uh, just wondering if you. Uh, ended up taking the other girl home, the whole slut from the night. No, I can't do anything unless Jessica's with me. She would have. She was a whore. But uh, <laughs> but Jessica wasn't with me, and I'm not allowed to have sex with other girls unless Jessica's there. Or... How would she find out, though? Well, that was what I was going to say next. <laughs> so, Unless uh, you went on the radio and talked about it. Official response right. is I did not have sex with that girl. <laughs> uh, all right. Go see Mitch Fatel at the Improv tonight, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, for tickets, call 216-696-4677. That's 216-696-4677. His website, MitchFatel.com. 
It's uh, his last name is spelled F A T E L. And you came to the show last time, and I wanted to thank you because I know that you don't go to a lot of comedian I never, shows. Ever, and you had a hot girl with you. So. I very, very rarely go out. It was, uh, I was honored. You of the house. This- Hot girl, and we de Peter, and it was <laughs> one of my wonderful memories. Um, his new uh, album, Public Display of Perversion, yes, that's available in stores now. iTunes, Amazon, MitchFatel.com. Well, good luck with that. Thank you, sir. Uh, good luck with this A and E thing. We'll see if this ever gets picked up. Sounds like it's going to be too racy for A and E. Well, don't say that because I really want to get a show. Can you already. go to? Uh, can you take it to another network? Well, or no, did A&E they financed the pilot. A and E so, made it. Yeah. So they made it. We man. thought it was going to be a Showtime show, but A and E said they wanted to go edgy. And then when we started going edgy, they were like, maybe not. Maybe can you guys make duck calls? Can you send? Can you send me a copy of the pilot? I'd be interested. Yeah, in, once in it's made, it. sure. I'd love oh, to. All right. Yeah, so yeah. you've just filmed it. They haven't we, edited we, it and put it together. Actually, and everything. Right yeah. in the middle of filming it. We filmed two weeks ago, right before I came here, and we're filming another two weeks when I go back home. All right. Right in the yeah, middle. Yeah, when that gets done, I want to I want to see that. Check I hope that out. it's good. Yeah. And maybe if the show gets picked up, we could do like one of the, because it's supposed to be a reality show. Right. I mean, I'm learning when it doesn't really work. <laughs> right. We'll but, make uh, it very realistic. Let's plan it out right now. Yeah, go maybe ahead. we'll do right. like a Roverfest tie in thing, and then that way I can finally come to Roverfest and have sex with girls there. Yes, you need to. You That's have to, don't, don't miss do. that next year. Uh, Mitch Fatel at the Improv this weekend. Thank you for coming in, my man. Hey, Robert. I yes. You uh, you have two pairs of tickets to give away to the show. Okay, all right. Sunday show. Give it the Sunday. That's my favorite show. All right. One eight six six Yo Rover. That's one eight six six nine six seven six eight three seven. Caller CD thirty. You. There you there go. There you go. Good catch. And Caller theater, thirty. You got a CD too. Cool. And thirty one. We'll give. Let's uh, see if I can knock you out with it. <laughs> if you can even get it there. <laughs> yeah. Come on, you little fruitcake. Put, put, I'm put some muscle into it. I need a big brother like you to help me. <laughs> teach me how to fight the other kids at school. <laughs> Uh, all right, uh, I have to take a quick break. We'll be right back on Rover's Morning Glory. Hang on. Thank you. Rover's Morning Glory.